and welcome to the new product update of PI's latest Wi-Fi 6 companion ICs. My name is Vihang Parmar, and I'm a product marketing engineer responsible for this portfolio. I also have my colleague Andres Blanco, who manages the software application for these devices. For today's agenda, we will first discuss common design challenges for Wi-Fi and how the TI Wi-Fi portfolio is making it easier to enable more efficient wireless connectivity in IoT applications. I will also uh, provide an overview of the latest CC3300 and CC3301 devices from our Wi-Fi 6 family, and an example application of this companion IC. Then Andreas will show us how this IC can be easily attached to a Linux or RTOS-based system. Lastly, we'll show you the design resources to get started on your development. Throughout this webinar, please feel free to send us your questions in the chat and we'll address them as, as we go. Today, we are experiencing an era of hyperconnectivity where more and more smart devices are connected to the internet to provide ever increasing number of data points that help us make better, more informed decisions. They are enabling us to personalize experiences, streamline operations, and predict future trends with greater accuracy than ever before. As more of these smart devices or edge nodes of the network are connected to the internet, there is a growing need for the solutions enabling this connectivity to provide robust performance in any environment. As the technology landscape is rapidly evolving, there is an urgent need for these connectivity solutions to future-proof the design with latest connectivity standards. Standards that can ensure interoperability and security while also providing the flexibility to scale across various platforms. TI's connectivity portfolio is addressing these needs by offering affordable and reliable wireless and wired technologies with our broad portfolio of solutions featuring the latest connectivity standards and comprehensive features, you can connect more devices to the internet and drive innovation for your products. Talking about Wi-Fi specifically, designing Wi-Fi in high density environments presents unique challenges, striking a balance between consistent RF performance and a reliable connection can be tricky especially in spaces crowded with devices. Adding cost effectiveness into the equation only complicates matter further. Additionally, security is a major concern as number of connected devices increases, so do potential entry points for cyber threats. We're also contending with complex certification processes and need for flexible design that caters to the variety of architectures. Lastly, the issue of coexistence with other wireless technologies come into play. We must ensure that our Wi-Fi solutions don't interfere with other wireless signals. So driven by these challenges, we continue to innovate, striving to deliver superior Wi-Fi solutions for these challenging environments. Our new SimpleLink Wi-Fi family of devices help overcome these challenges by providing robust Wi-Fi performance at an affordable price. Starting at a competitive price point of $1.60 uh, for 1KU volumes, these devices help enable cost-effective implementation. These devices support the latest Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth Low Energy 5.3 standards to help future-proof your designs, and they can also easily attach to a processor or MCU in your system to provide the scalability across various platforms. So let's take a deeper look at uh, uh, these new devices. Uh, so on the left, you see our, uh, the block diagram of our uh, newly released CC3301 part. Uh, these parts are uh, currently sampling, and you see two variants in this family, uh, CC3300, uh, which offers the entry-level Wi-Fi 6, and we also have CC3301 that adds Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth Low Energy 5.3 all in the single device. Now, looking at the device uh, block diagram, you'll notice that we have uh, the offering for CC3301 that includes the 
Wi-Fi and BLE built into the same radio, and it has a single antenna output. This means not only you get a coexistence built into the device between Wi-Fi and BLE protocols, uh, you also have a single antenna output uh, that uh, only requires one 2.4 gigahertz antenna. So while uh, having a single stream and reducing your overall bomb cost, uh, you get the you get the two protocols in the same device. Uh, moving over to the left, you'll see uh, some of the main interfaces this device uh, can use to connect to an external processor or MCU. Our SDIO or SBI interface. Uh, we also have an optional UART interface for uh, Bluetooth uh, over HCI. Additionally, we also have a coexistence interface built into the device that can help connect to other 2.4 gigahertz devices that may be running other protocols like ZigBee, Thread, et cetera. Uh, these devices uh, offer the network efficiency benefits of Wi-Fi 6 uh, with features like uh, OFDMA and uh, BSS coloring. And additionally, uh, they also uh, support wide temperature range from minus 40 degrees Celsius to one of five C. All these devices uh, in our portfolio, they're tested with hundreds of access points uh, that are common in the market. So that also helps you ensure that when you use this, pro this device in your product, uh, they can work seamlessly uh, with common access points out there and have a best possible interoperability. Uh, we're also uh, trying to solve uh, the, the security challenge uh, by integrating uh, some of the built-in functionality into this device. Uh, so we have support for latest WPA3 uh, uh, standard uh, for this device, and there's also a firmware authentication built into the device that you can enable uh, to make sure uh, no one can load an older uh, firmware uh, to the device. So uh, we're, we're keeping security in focus for this device. And lastly, this device is designed to be flexible. Uh, so like I had mentioned earlier, you can connect it to like a Cortex-A class processor that might be running Linux, or you can connect it to microcontrollers uh, that might be running a real-time operating system. With that in mind, I'd like to talk to you about a few of the applications that this device can go in. Because of its cost-effective design, and secure reliable performance. This device can be used in a variety of applications ranging from uh, smart homes, building automation, uh, like the uh, security for uh, building security or the, or the HVAC and fire safety systems, uh, to smart grid applications where devices might be deployed uh, inside and outside home, uh, whether that's electricity meters, solar renewable, uh, uh, inverters and battery storage or uh, EV chargers. Uh, because of the cost-effective design, this device uh, can also meet uh, your price and performance needs for cost-sensitive applications like appliances and personal electronics like printers and uh, electronic point of sale, etc. So I'd like to dive a bit deeper into uh, one uh, specific use case and we can take a look at how these uh, CC33 family of devices uh, can add value to your application. Uh, so here's an example of a smart energy uh, management uh, deployment. Uh, you'll see there are several applications that are generally Wi-Fi enabled uh, in this scenario. From the left, uh, we have the uh, HVAC and heat pump system that could be connected to Wi-Fi. And uh, looking more outside the home, we also have uh, some of the smart grid applications, uh, meter, energy, uh, energy gateways, energy hubs, the battery storage solutions, and EV chargers, and uh, uh, inverters, microinverter or string inverter for the solar energy. So. As these devices can be deployed inside or outside the house, uh, there is generally a huge consideration on the outdoor uh, thermal performance of the device. Uh, so we're, we are designing these parts with uh, 
with this requirement in mind. And as a result, our CC33 family of devices support operating temperature up to 105C. So you can ensure that your device has consistent performance across the wide range. Additionally, we also have robust tariff performance, uh, ensuring that whether deployed inside or outside the house, you get the best possible performance uh, on the on the Wi-Fi network. Now, uh, having uh, having an affordable and reliable device like this has several benefits in the uh, at a high level. Uh, for example, this allows you to put more Wi-Fi connectivity at an affordable price in more applications, uh, and that will ultimately help us enable, uh, in this particular scenario, uh, grid companies can use the data uh, gathered uh, gathered by these devices and have a smarter load distribution. Uh, so this is one example. Of course, uh, devices deployed in the house, in the office buildings, uh, there are also uh, similar benefits that come from the device's performance and overall uh, Wi-Fi 6 uh, improvements in the standard. So with that, I will hand over the presentation to my colleague, Andreas, who will walk us through how these devices can easily connect to any host. <clears throat> yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, so as Vihang has mentioned, uh, one of the key principles that we followed when designing uh, this new device is the ability to have it be flexible. Uh, and by that, we mean, you know, having the capability of being able to add it to an existing solution of yours uh, that may already have a host processor of your choosing in it already, or if you're designing a brand new system, not be tied to a specific host. Um, and, for, um, and, and the way we achieve this is by allowing you to uh, connect it to either an MPU or an MCU, uh, but we go uh, a bit further than that. And let's say that your system requires you to have a Linux system on an MPU type host. Um, uh, our plan is to have drivers being upstreamed and the drivers are portable in a way that the main thing you need to do is uh, change the device tree settings on your system uh, and apply the correct pin configuration and you should be good to go. Uh, today, for example, we have it running on the AM335 uh, devices, but also uh, the brand new AM62 uh, devices uh, that TI uh, recently released and announced. Uh, but we won't stop there. Uh, we, we also have uh, other systems that we can work with. Uh, on the right side here, uh, we show you how we're not limited to only running with Linux. So let's say that you have a more uh, memory constrained RTOS type system uh, and you have an MCU. If your MCU uh, has enough memory, and by enough memory we mean between 500K uh, and one meg, should be more than enough, uh, you can connect uh, uh, the same transceiver. And the main difference is uh, instead of leveraging the Linux networking stack, uh, you will need a networking stack. Uh, and our device and our software that we provide uh, allows you with a good and portable abstraction layer uh, in order to use whatever networking stack your system needs. Uh, we do offer ready-to-go examples uh, with the CC26 uh, 52 family of devices um, and the AM24. Uh, but there are more examples to come with other family of devices. Uh, we are, it's not going to be limited to only TI hosts. And, uh, and also, we will focus on offering multiple networking stack solutions uh, so that you are not limited by the software or the hardware on the host side. And you can use our devices with any platform that your system needs.
with that, I live it back to uh, V hung. Hi, all. Uh, so this device, uh, uh, we have the software offerings uh, for both Linux and RTOS ecosystem. And we also have uh, the evaluation module uh, that can help you kickstart your development uh, uh, easily. Uh, so we have the samples of the devices available. And uh, the board you see on the screen here, that is our BPCC3301. And, uh, it is available on TIA.com, as well as uh, in the uh, in the additional resources of this webinar. Uh, so feel free to order that or reach out to your local uh, TI context uh, to access this uh, uh, this hardware tool. And uh, uh, similarly, uh, the software SDKs are also available on the uh, CC3300 and CC3301 product pages. Uh, where you can request the access to download them. Uh, we have the support for this device in the TI developer zone and also on our E2E uh, support forms. Uh, here are some of the resources that uh, that you can leverage. Uh, there are direct links to the product pages and also uh, a tech article explaining uh, in, in a bit more detail which Wi-Fi 6 features uh, we are enabling in this device to help uh, the IoT use case uh, and keeping your solution very cost effective. The last two, uh, we, we have the software and the booster pack links that you can download from, uh, from here as well. Uh, with that, I would like to thank you all uh, for joining today's webinar. And uh, we do have some questions uh, in the chat uh, that uh, that we can address real quick. So uh, there was one question, uh, if uh, WPA2 Enterprise is supported, uh, yes. Uh, so this device has WPA3 support, but it is backward compatible uh, with WPA2. And uh, uh, second question was, is there a plan uh, to integrate the host network processor like our CC32XX family or uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Uh, so uh, I may not be able to share uh, full details our, of our roadmap, but TI uh, makes uh, Wi-Fi solutions in, in different architectures uh, with varying level of uh, software integration for different applications. So I would highly recommend uh, if you're interested in the uh, in our upcoming devices, uh, please feel free to reach out to your local TI sales rep or FAE, and we can discuss our roadmap in much greater detail uh, to suit your needs. And was there another question about does the BLE 5.3 support uh, CTE for angle of arrival uh, locationing? Uh, Andres, could you quickly uh, answer that? Yeah, definitely. Um... Uh, as of now, uh, we have uh, the basic uh, 5.3 functionality from BLE. Um, but the good news is that we are leveraging the same uh, BLE stack as what the CC26XX family of devices uh, use, and they do offer this functionality. Um, and that's something that we are, we're looking into. At the moment, we're focusing on enabling all of the 5.3 uh, functionality and having that ready to go. There was another question. Uh, how about the module so solution availability? Uh, so really good question. Uh, right now, uh, we have several uh, third-party module vendors uh, that are using uh, this device and they are sampling the modules uh, based on this solution. So if you're looking for a module uh, uh, for either faster uh, development cycle uh, for time to market or uh, just offloading the certification effort, uh, we do have solutions uh, based on this device. And, and you can find more information on the product page regarding this too. With that, uh, I think that was all the questions. So uh, thank you again very much, and I'll 
I'll hand over to Kelly to conclude. All right, thank you. And thank you everyone for joining today's MPU webinar. Next week's MPU, we will have automotive product marketing engineer, George Lacus here to present improved traction inverter system efficiency at a lower cost with real-time variable gate drive strength. Be sure to register for this upcoming session by visiting ti.com slash MPU and click on the register now link. Thanks again for, uh, for being here and we look forward to seeing you again next week.